Today, I will talk about modeling collective interactions between spheroid and uh, collagen fibers. This work uh, is in collaboration with Jen Schwartz group in Syracuse University. Uh, cancer can be conceptualized as an unfavorable morphogenesis occurring within a constraining microenvironment. This environment is a complex structure uh, composed of different components, including the cancer cells, cancer associated fibroblasts or uh, CAFs for short, immune cells, blood vessels, and a structure known as the extracellular matrix or ECM for short. So each of these elements plays a crucial role in how cancer progresses. These cancer associated fibroblasts help remodel the ECM. They encourage the growth of new blood vessels and they even suppress immune responses. And ECM is a complex network of large molecules that provide structural support to the cells and influences their behavior, including their movement, growth, and the differentiation. When it comes to cancer, the ECM under the influence of CAFs can actually promote the invasion of cancer cells into surrounding tissues. So this is a key step in the process of metastasis where cancer spreads to other parts of the body. So the environment in which a tumor develops isn't just a passive observer, it's an active participant in the progression of cancer. It's a complex and a dynamic system that we are still working to fully understand. So we are focusing on a unique in vitro cancer model known as embedded spheroid. These spheroid are just clusters of multiple cells and they represent a complex and a dynamic system closely mimicking the physiological conditions of a tumor. They are embedded within a 3D network made up of collagen, a key component of the extracellular matrix. Over time, it's observed that cancer cells within this spheroid begin to invade the surrounding collagen network. This process mirrors the invasive behavior of cancer cells in the body, making embedded spheroids a powerful tool for studying cancer progression and testing potential treatment. We can also use spheroids made from mouse embryonic fibroblasts embedding them in collagen networks. These two serve as a powerful tool, providing us with another avenue to explore how cancer progress. Uh, and mechanical interactions between cells and the 3D ECM critically regulate cell function, including cell growth and migration. For a single cell embedded within 3D collagen matrix, the cell can actually pull on the collagen fibers, causing them to align and stiffen. So this process is a form of mechanical sensing where the cell senses and the response to its mechanical environment. The stiffer the collagen matrix becomes, the more force the cell generates, creating a positive feedback loop. This pulling even leads to the cell itself becoming stiffer. So now let's uh, scale this up from a single cell to a spheroid. The same principle applies. The cells within the spheroid can collectively pull on the surrounding ECM and remodel it. This remodeling process involves the alignment and the stiffening of the collagen fibers in the ECM. This interaction between the spheroid and the ECM is critical in understanding various biological processes, including how tumors invade the surrounding tissues. Our research aims to provide valuable insights into these complex cell ECM interactions and the role of mechanical sensing in health and disease. So now uh, let's delve deeper into this process. In the next discussion, uh, I will explore the question, how do spheroids mechanical sense the fibrous network to remodel it to affect the motion of the invading cells? 
to begin to answer the question, uh, we can use a 3D vortex model to study structure formation at the cellular scale in spheroids. Such models are the models with cells represented as deformable polyhedrons, and there are no gaps between them. We can make quantitative predictions regarding the morphology and the rheology of a spheroid with this model. The energy functional gives the quadratic penalty, uh, quadratic penalty from deviating from a cell's preferred volume and uh, surface area. V here is the cell volume. S is the cell surface area. The target cell volume is said to be one, and the target cell surface area is S0. Here, S0 is also uh, known as the target shape index because the target volume is said to be one. The target uh, area S0 has a physical meaning of controlling whether the cell cell adhesion or the cortical tension dominates. The target is now is uh, the target area is now is also related to the isotropy of cortical contractivity uh, contractility. The larger the S now is, the less isotropically contractile the cell is, and the vice versa. And the volume term represents the bark elasticity of the cell. We use Browning dynamics to simulate the motion of what is this over time. Now that we have addressed the mechanical aspects of cells, we must also account for their dynamics. So cells can move past each other, even while the tissue remains confluent. In two dimensions, uh, such movements are known as T1 transition or T1 events. In three dimensions, such movements are known as reconnection events. As for how cells exchange neighbors via a reconnection event, we focus on uh, edges going to triangles or triangles going to edges, as shown in the figure and the movie. To determine if a reconnection event occurs, we look for edges with uh, edge length less than a threshold length LTH. We also look for triangles with all three edge lengths less than the threshold length LTH. If there are indeed such edges or triangles, we choose one of the edges randomly and perform an edge to triangle reconnection event in which the edge vanishes and it is replaced by a triangle whose normal vector is parallel to the initial edge. Uh, in the other direction, we can also choose one of the triangles randomly and uh, perform a triangle to edge reconnection event. Our 3D vertex model uh, is written based on a Kutas paper in 2013. The conditions introduced in this paper should be met to ensure whether a reconnection event is physically plausible. One condition is that the change in energy before and after the reconnection event should be in the order of the threshold length LTH. Another condition uh, relates to resolving the topological irreversibility and uh, should satisfy three subconditions. Two edges do not share two vertices simultaneously. Two polygonal faces do not share two or more edges simultaneously. And two polyhedral cells do not share two or more polygonal faces simultaneously. Uh, the third subcondition is implemented by us to, uh, given the computational efficiency and uh, was not discussed in the paper of Akuda. Let's first uh, study a bark vertex model. There are no gaps between cells, and the packing uh, fraction, packing fraction is fixed at one. Prior work has found a density independent rigidity transition in 2D vertex model and a 3D Voronoi model.
we will use the same version of the energy functional to ask first whether or not there exists a related transition in 3D vortex model. As for the bark case simulations, the initial state is created using a 3D Voronoi tessellation given randomized cell centers and assuming periodic boundary conditions. This movie shows the dynamics of two systems with different target shape indices. The system with lower target shape index, index S0 looks like solid with S0 equals to 5.3, uh, while the system with higher S0 uh, looks like fluid. We use the concept of uh, neighbors overlap function combined with trajectories to determine whether the cells remain localized or not. For the solid-like system, the cells do not change neighbors, which means uh, the overlap function Qn equals to one. For the fluid-like system, cells do change neighbors, so Qn is less than one. The smaller Qn becomes, the more cells change neighbors. We measure Qn overlap function for the bark system for different target shape indices. So as shown in the figure, we observe that for low S0, for S0 equals to 5.1, Qn equals to one, and it remains at unity throughout the duration of simulation. However, for S0, for high value of S0, uh, S0 equal to 5.8, it is clear that Qn is decaying to a value less than one. The overlap function uh, can be fit to an exponential decay with a decay time approaching zero around uh, S0 equals to 5.39, which is our estimate for the rigidity transition point. Additionally, uh, some cell trajectories shown on the right of the figure are also plotted. For a larger value of S0, some trajectories span long, uh, larger than one cell length to indicate that cells are not caged. Therefore, we uh, find both solid-like and fluid-like behaviors as a function of uh, target shape index S0 suggesting a density independent rigidity transition in this 3D vertex model. Uh, where understanding the uh, bark behavior is important, we now focus on uh, confluent cellular collectives or a clump of cells. We introduce a uh, boundary interfacial surface tension term into the energy functional. Uh, here, uh, the delta alpha beta uh, equals one if a uh, surface phase, if a phase alpha is at a boundary, is at the surface of the collective, and a zero otherwise. So for the cells at the boundary of the cellular collective, there is an additional surface tension term for phases interacting with the vacuum or outer space. Here, the factor gamma indicates the magnitude of this surface tension. We explore the structure and the rheology of the cellular collective as it undergoes the lateral extension and ask whether or not there exists emergent pneumatic ordering along the unitactual direction of extension. So to test for this, we fit each polyhedron cell to a minimal volume ellipsoid and then determine the orientation of the long axis represented by rods in the figures. We then compute the average of the absolute value of the cosine of the angle between any two rods for any pair of rods, some distance R from each other in terms of their centers. So this is a basically correlation function indicates the correlation in alignment between two rods. Uh, we separate the boundary cells from the bark cells in the 
in this instance and look for correlation in alignment between stairs in the bark and between stairs on the boundary. So for the fluid case with uh, target shape index S now equals 5.6, we found that for bark stairs, the spatial correlation in alignment is rather similar to the bark system with periodic boundary condition. In other words, we do not observe pneumatic ordering for the bark stairs. However, for the boundary stairs, they do exhibit ordering with a much higher correlation in alignment as compared to the bark stairs. So there is a one stair skin depth phenomenon in which the boundary stairs align with the deformation, but the bark stairs do not. Uh, this difference emerges in the solid like system with target shape index S0 equals 5.0 as well. However, the distance in spatial correlation in alignment among its cells in the bark and among its cells in the boundary is not as large. So to summarize, there is a density independent rigidity transition in 3D. The structure of the edge boundary cells does not strongly affect structure in the bark. And uh, uh, our code for the bark system uh, is publicly available on GitHub. So then next, uh, let's move on to the ECM fiber networks model. We use a 3D letters based fiber networks model. The networks consist of straight fibers organized geome geometrically on a face centered cubic FCC letters. However, we limit the maximum coordination number to four by randomly assigning two independent pairs of cross-linked fibers out of the six fibers crossing at a vertex. This is called Fenton FCC lattice. The elastic energy of the fiber network involves stretching and bending contributions of the fibers characterized by their stretching modulus and bending rigidity. We can further lower the average coordination number Z by cutting bounds with a probability one minus P. Uh, the movie shows the configurations of the networks under sharing deformation for two different values of the Z, which is the average coordination number. Then we can measure the shear modulus of the fibrous network as a function of shear strain. Our simulation qualitatively reproduced the experimentally measured shear rheology data uh, for different coordination numbers or collagen concentrations. Let's now uh, couple the spheroid to the fiber network we uh, can add linker screens attached between the center of boundary surface polygons of cells and the nearest uh, vertices in the fiber network. These linker screens represent focal adhesions, uh, which is simple linear screens. We also implement a contact mechanism mechanics to avoid overlap between cells and the fibers. So if a uh, fiber and the vertex approaching the boundary cell surface and become too close to it, there will be a repulsive potential and generate a repulsive force to push the fiber away from the surface uh, cell. So how do spheroids mechanical sense the fibrous network to remodel it? So we are now ready to begin to, begin to answer this que question. So uh, to mimic the activity, the interaction between cells and uh, the surrounding ECM fibers, we uh, decrease the rest length of the linker screens 
uh, this is our appro approximation. So by decreasing the target length of those linker screens shown as uh, black rods in the movie, we mimic the interaction between cells and the uh, surrounding fibers and uh, the activity. So uh, by decreasing by decreasing, by shrinking those linker screens, we observe long range collagen fiber alignment. We also see high tension fibers tend to orient radially. So uh, next we plot the ECM displacement profile to study how this activity interaction uh, remodel the ECM networks. So here the plot is the average ECM displacement as a function of the radial distance to the center of the spheroid. <clears throat> we can see that uh, the curve with the highest value of target shape index is now equal to 5.8, uh, behaves quite differently than the other curves. Uh, which corresponds to the fluid-like spheroids. So uh, ECM fibers appear to be more displaced for fluid-like spheroid as compared to solid-like uh, spheroid. Our explanation is uh, for fluid-like spheroid, uh, there are more re reconnection events, rearrangements of cells within the spheroid and even on the surface of the spheroid. So there is more activity and the uh, constantly breaking and reforming of the linker screens. So this activity constantly exert forces uh, on surrounding fibers to pull the fibers inward. So that's why uh, for fluid-like uh, spheroid, the ECM fibers appear to be more displaced. So uh, then we plot the cell shape indices distributions to give us some information for the spheroid uh, during the shrinkage of the linker screens. So this uh, plot also shows the difference between the fluid-like spheroid and the solid-like spheroid for highest value of uh, target shape index is now equal to 5.8. Uh, it's a high peak, which means uh, all cells can reach the target shape index, but for a solid like case for lower values of S now, you can see a broader distribution means not every cell can reach the targeted uh, shape index. So this proves the difference of the fluid like uh, spheroid than the solid like spheroid. Then we study the effect of the interfacial surface tension between the spheroid and uh, the empty space, outer space. We found that uh, if we increase the gamma, the factor, uh, which is the magnitude of interfacial surface tension term, uh, if we increase the interfacial surface tension, uh, then uh, we see slightly less difference between fluid-like spheroid and uh, solid-like spheroid. Uh, with higher uh, interfacial surface tension, the spheroid is more bored up, it's more spherical. Uh, then we uh, show the ECM density profile for different target shape indices. Again, we see uh, for high values of it's now uh, for fluid like spheroid the ECM appear to be pulled inward more compared to the solid like spheroid, which is uh, consistent with previous plot. Next, we uh, further plot the linker screen force profile for different target shape indices. So again, for uh, fluid like spheroids, uh, the linker screen force keep increasing uh, as a function of the simulation time, which is uh, different than the behaviors of the soil-like spheroids. 
So this means uh, uh, for free like spheroid, more activity, uh, more interaction between stairs and the uh, surrounding fibers networks. So the linker spring force keeps increasing. To summarize for this section, uh, we introduced a new computational model for an embedded spheroid that can remodel the fibrous microenvironment. And fluid-like spheroids show more activity and remodeling, constantly breaking and reforming of the linker springs. So ECM fibers are pulled inward and deformed more for fluid-like spheroid. Then uh, what can we go even further with uh, this 3D vertex model? So is this model enough to describe how brain organoids are built? Uh, the answer is no. Is no. Uh, let's consider a serial nucleus. So my collaborators uh, in Jen Schwartz group in Syracuse University recently have constructed a, a chromatin lamina system with a chromatin modeled as active Ross chain and a lamina as an elastic polymeric shear with linkages between the chain and the shear. They included the chromatin cross links, which may be a consequence of motors forming droplets or complexes. They also implemented the simplest type of motor uh, namely, extensile and contractile monopoles act on the chromatin. This cell nucleus model incorporates activity as well as the deformability of the shear and the chromatin lamina linkages from which correlated chromatin motion emerges. The 3D vortex model, our a model and the nucleus elastic shear model can be combined to ultimately test multi scale hypothesis linking the chromatin scale and the tissue scale. We want to answer the question how do human brain organoids develop differently from chimpanzee brain organoids? Here we provide a multi scale hypothesis to distinguish structural differences between uh, brain organoids built from human and uh, uh, gorilla or chimpanzee stem cells. So recent experiments discovered that a cell fate transition from neural epithelia or NE for short, NE cells, to radio glide cells or RG cells for short, uh, this cell transition from NE to RG cells includes a new intermediate state that is delayed in human derived brain organoids as compared to the genetically close relatives, which uh, significantly narrows and elongates the cells on the apical side. Representative uh, immunofluorescent images show that. Although NE cells of the two species exhibited similar morphologies at day three, Gorina NE cells at day five exhibited a decreased apical process volume. Human cells instead exhibited this more elongated, narrow shape. By day 10, both human and Gorilla NE cells exhibited a similarly elongated and constricted morphology typical of RG cells. Additional experiments revealed that the protein ZB2 plays a major role in the emergence of this new intermediate state, with ZB2 mRNA labels peaking at the onset of the emergence. We postulate that the enhancement of ZB2 expression driving this intermediate state is potentially due to chromatin reorganization. More precisely, uh, there exists critical strain triggering the reorganization that is higher for human-derived stem cells 
thereby resulting in a delay. Such a hypothesis can be tested computationally within individual cells and within brain organoids. We can embed the cells in 3D vertex model now with nuclei and investigate how perturbations in chromatin organization depend on the cell nucleus deformations. We begin with the cortex lumen structure as shown in the movie, which is a band of cells surrounding a fluid field core known as lumen. We mimic an effect of cell division by compressing the organoid in a particular direction. We invoke a simplifying assumption that cell nuclear shape tracks cell shape. We can then apply mechanical deformations to our deformable cell nuclei that track cell deformations and ask how does the chromatin organization change in response. We can then measure uh, the displacement of the chromatin monomers. We observe smaller displacements for the more cross-linked chromatin. We can look for spatial correlations in the differences in displacements between the control case and the perturbed case with slightly fewer crosslinks. We do find pockets of larger differences in displacements with such regions, uh, which can be candidates for differences in gene expression with the assumption that changes in chromatin configuration can potentially influence genetic regulatory networks at the base pair level. For now, we have only considered one type of correlation here. The reference type and uh, the type with uh, reduced number of crosslinks. So now we have one type of perturbation, reduced number of crosslinks. So other types of perturbations can be explored. So uh, to summarize, um, we postulate a multi-scale hypothesis for difference in brain organoid structure derived from human and chimpanzee-derived stem cells. The hypothesis is uh, there exists critical strain triggering the chromatin reorganization that is higher for human-derived stem cells, thereby resulting in a delay. our uh, multi-scale model uh, from tissue scale to cell scale to nuclear scale uh, is a reasonable starting point to test this hypothesis. Uh, so in the future, there is much to be done. So such as a different initialization of the fiber network cell breakout from the spheroid, uh, spheroid growth, cell growth, and co-cultural spheroids. Um, I, acknowledge, I acknowledge my theoretical collaborators, Jim Schwartz Group uh, in Circuit University. We also acknowledge our experimental collaborators, Ali Patterson Group in Circuit University, and a Mimi Wu Group in Cornell. Uh, we also uh, acknowledge Lisa Manning group in Circuit University for discussion. So that's my talk. Thank you.